A very good evening to you from St Paul's at home, Tony Hurl here at St Paul's Vicarage and it's the night before Pentecost, the church's birthday and we're going to uh, look at the song Light the Fire Again and then uh, think of the disciples as they were preparing for Pentecost, what Jesus said to them. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another where we've sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. So receive that forgiveness, one at the cross, freely available. And Lord, we ask that you apply it to our hearts so we know forgiveness for what we've done and we forgive others from our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. And the song Light the Fire by Brian Dirksen, again is a short one. I love Brian Dirksen's uh, music. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm calling out, light the fire again. Don't let my vision die. I'm calling out, light the fire again. You know my heart, my deeds. I'm calling out, light the fire again. We need your discipline. I'm calling out, light the fire again. I'm here to buy gold refined in the fire. Naked and poor, wretched and blind, I come. Clothe me in white so I won't be ashamed. Lord, light the fire again. And in this time, there have been various words of preparing the nets, but also of the picture of the sort of uh, wise virgins having oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit. So I think that's a very appropriate song, isn't it? To light the fire again, to not let my love grow cold. We know God wants that, but he's prepared, isn't he, for discipline for that, to cut away the things which have cramped our growth, perhaps the cares of this world or the pleasures of this world. So we ask, Father, that you would light our fires, increase in us the fire of your Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Eve. Jesus, when he'd appeared to the disciples in Luke 24, he said there were wonderful passages, isn't it? He opened their minds to understand the scriptures and I'd love to have been present at that. But he told them, this is what's written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. He said to those disciples, you're witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. And in Acts 1.8, in another Luke's account, uh, at the beginning of Acts, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so in this kingdom come period of prayer for the mission of the church, this is based on this, that in those 10 days between the Ascension and Pentecost, Jesus said, wait in the city and I'm going to clothe you in prayer. And what they did in that time was pray. They gathered together in the upper room. They still feared the Jews, but they were together, united, praying. And we don't know quite the content of their prayers, but perhaps they were just rejoicing that Jesus was risen. Perhaps they were preparing themselves and consecrating themselves, asking God to light the fire and perhaps getting rid of some of the things they had, the baggage they'd carried. Certainly they'd, Peter had had that experience of being forgiven for his denial and restored, not just into the family, but into leadership. 
but they were waiting to be clothed with power from on high. And so, as we come tomorrow to Pentecost, let's make that our prayer. That And treat that as, again, I'm going to try this year to treat it as a present-day reality, that we are clothed with fire, and to expect, therefore, all the benefits of Pentecost in us and through us for his glory. So, Father, we pray for the extension of your kingdom. We pray that people will become Christians, that the forgiveness of sins will be preached in Jesus' name to all nations. So we pray for the gospel going out across the world. We pray for it going out in our country, and we pray for us being part of it going out. And Father, we know that we can't do it by our own strength. So we pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to be lit in our lives. So we ask that where we're pilot-like Christians, we're just a little flame, because every Christian's got the Holy Spirit, that we may become full-powered Christians. So we ask, Lord, you'd prune us, you'd train us, you'd encourage us, as you are the perfect gardener, and that we would know your power at work in us. And Lord, we pray for the world, that it may hear the gospel of forgiveness in ways it can understand. We pray for the preaching across the languages, but across the different cultures, but in ways that people can understand. And we pray in these days for the perhaps the changing of the way we pray things so that people hear the good news. Lord, as we know, many people aren't are sort of attracted to Jesus, but not the church. We pray for the ways the church to change. We pray, Lord, for the way that we're open to new people, like those early Christians saw immense growth. So from being a close-knit group of 120 in the upper room, they became a, a united group of 5,000. We pray for the including of newcomers, be they in these days virtual or people we know. But we pray for us to be one family. And we pray for that family to cross the boundaries that exist in society and for our unity under you to be notable and our sharing across the boundaries to be notable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for our world. Not just as individuals, we can be naked and poor, wretched and blind. But we pray for our world in all its struggles. We pray for the inequalities to be lessened. We pray for governments to make wise decisions. And we pray for the realigning of ourselves to be good stewards of our role to bless the whole earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you've redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wing. God, who has at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them to the light of your Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. In peace we'll lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And so may the Spirit of Truth fill us and light the flame in us afresh. And not just lead us into all truth, but also enable us to proclaim that truth the forgiveness in ways that people can understand, speaking in different ways, different tongues, to communicate to different people. 
and grant us grace to offer ourselves for your pruning and adjusting that we may be more fruitful and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us always. Amen. A very good night and a good Pentecost tomorrow. Bye-bye.